well, somewhere new. Both of us today. Fish the mark macro that will be familiar to a lot of the Yorkshire lads. It's a first for us. We just had two days at the Euros, so we just wanted complete convenience, didn't we? Absolutely. Cars just there. No muddy cliffs to get down. Concrete, flat, easy. Yeah, very, <laughs> very. It's, uh, we're already a couple of casts in. Um, Gary's had a codlin. I had one, had a load of weed wrapped around my leader knot. Tried to take it off and then, oh yeah, by the time I got it off, the fish had come off, but pretty much sums up the weekend, doesn't it? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we have seen a fish. I mean, we've had cast each and we've had the fish each, so it's a good, a good start on that front. There's finally some activity. There is a bit of weed. We've got about another hour or so of low water. We've never fished this mark, and uh, we've come down. I don't know what 250, 300 yards from the cars. There's about four or five guys further up, and Gary's just pointing out to realise why they're fishing up because the, the mud's starting to appear in front of us but up there it's it's the water still in front of them so if we get any more fish over the next couple hours I think they're going to be quite muddy specimens we've got to drag them over the mud but I'd rather we'll have that problem to deal with I think um, so yeah we're just gonna chill out the winds picked up a lot it's pretty cold it's probably only three or four degrees um, got the shelter up which is very very convenient um, bit rainy but we're holding bottom all right there's obviously fish out there so we're just gonna sit and kick back for a few hours and hopefully salvage something of the weekend yeah I mean it's been pretty personal hasn't it this weekend hasn't it but for everybody really the yeah. conditions have been dreadful yeah um, so hopefully here at least we'll just get a one size fish out and I think we'll be happy with them yeah, yeah absolutely so what have we gone for rig wise? Rig, just gone for a pulley, just a basic pulley, 3 o hook bottom, um, size 1 o on the top, little chin out just to hold it all. Just hitting it as far as I can really. Yeah. Uh, this is a wide river obviously, the Humber. Um, yeah, just hoping for the best. Like I said, never fished here before, I haven't got a clue what what goes on here. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be just mud, so. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. We haven't encountered any snags. No, yet, not yet, not yet. So, bit of weed, a bit yeah. annoying on the leader knots, but yeah. Other than that, it's, that. it's all right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I've gone exactly the same. Just simple pulley, three O's, panel. We're just using yellow tails and a little bit of rag, really, just using up the bait we've got left. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can pull out a couple of fish. Yeah, yeah. Finally just had a bite there, that bait's been out quite a long time, just have a couple of taps there. Come on. Had a couple of really good bites, and of course, right. oh, yeah,
of that or it's so shallow and me sink I keeps hitting the bottom. Right. Rather muddy, but quite welcome. Cumber flounder. Quite chunky, right? Isn't yeah, it? it's not a bad little fish. Give us a nice rattle. Try and get him back. Harry's just winding in his first cast. There is a little bit of weed starting to show you might be able to see it on on the line there on Gary's rod. On his rod tip. That's how I ended up losing my fish. There was load of weed around the lead and I sort of pull it off and look back down the fish had gone. Is there? Yeah? Oh, it's got one. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Codlin. It's a fat little thing, eh, Minnie? Look at the shape of that. Hey! Wow. Get in there. That is a circus humber cod if ever <laughs> I've seen one. <laughs> so, finally managed to get a fish. It's massive. <laughs> Look at the shape of that little fella. Wow. That is. He has been eating all the little pies. I've never, I've seen, never seen a quite like that. That's weird. And it? it's just definitely like circus cod. You can see his stomach's full as a gun. <laughs> Very <laughs> strange. Say? Anyway. Real wise today I've decided to give the fixed spool a run out so I'm on fixed spool and braid. You're sticking to mono on you. Sorry, I'm speaking to you when you're getting <laughs> stuck into a scotch yeah. egg there. Or a pork pie I think it is, is it? Pork pie. Staple food of anglers. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm just staying with what I did, um, two euros. Um, copy T800, it's a nice rod with the glass tip, it sits nice in tidal areas like this. And um, cast and special, 18 pound line, taper shot leader. Hope that weed doesn't get any worse because that was a bit problematic on the taper chart leader because it's a long leader. Quite a bit of um, weed around the knot there, and obviously had that fish on. If that was a decent fish, I think I'd even panic on there. So we'll see on this cast what it looks like. But I might run to the car and get me a uh, fixed wheel and just go and uh, eat these straight through. But we'll see.
feel like pulling around straight away there like just gonna try and let it sit somewhere that's a fish that gotta be Yep. Oh, it's come off. I've just felt like a little bump there and it just came off. Bollocks. A little bit and I just thought it was you know, just Yeah, so yeah. Ah. <sighs> just cast out and Gary and I were just saying, yeah, there must be, I don't know if I've hit a slightly deeper, deeper bit or a bit with a bit more tie, but that rod's just ripped all the way around. That's only got the six ounce sinker on. It's just bouncing and bouncing. If it keeps happening, I might, I might switch to mono and try and use the stretch to help us because Gary's getting pulled a bit, but it's, it's sitting in the tide, whereas my, my gear's just bouncing out. Seems to have settled a little bit there, but. If there's any local lads watching this, be interested to know how you fish this place, how you find it, what the currents and tide pulls are like, what species you catch as well, that would be interesting. We were wondering whether you get any hounds here. There was a guy up there, I was talking to, he's local, he said there was a competition on here during the summer and there was a stray hound, he mentioned his pal got a turbot as well, so it doesn't surprise us like we were talking about it earlier and it's got shares a lot of the same characteristics as the Bristol Channel. Massive loads of tide, loads of colour on the water. The water's just like chocolate. There's probably any amount of food source as well. A lot of the fish off the coast here seem to be packed with shrimp and I've no doubt this place will be teeming with crabs in about a month, six weeks time once it warms up a bit. But yeah that is just peculiar that I can only think it's just the Strength of the current just whacking me, uh, me gear around. I'll try once more with seven and if it keeps bouncing, I'll switch to mono. Ordinarily, you'd say there's a fish on there, but not so. We're well into this session now. Um, like we said earlier, it's the first time we've fished here. It's not a bad venue actually, it's quite nice. I would imagine in a, it's obviously a bit cold today, but in the summer, summer night here, it'd be rather nice, I think. Yeah, definitely. But like all venues like this, rivers, marks, you know, once the tide turns and the, or, or it gets, gets a bit of pace up, the pulp can be savage and we're starting to struggle now. Um, I'm just holding bottom now on mono, 18 pound mono, tapered shock lead and a six ounce weight. It's just holding, it's pulling up, but just holding. But if it gets any more, if, get, if the tide picks up any more, with any more pace, then um, that's it, I think we'll, we'll be gone. <laughs> so yeah. So David's just switched back over to Mono, um, struggling with the braid. It was just bouncing him up the river straight away. It couldn't hold bottom. So we'll give it a bit longer, see how we'll go. Hopefully some fish will turn up, but we'll see. Coffee time, I think. There's only one thing that makes coffee time better. And it is, of course, one of Co-op's finest five double chocolate chunk cookies. And what more could I want? Mm. 
freedom. Just talking here and I've gone, as I was saying, mono and seven ounces. I've put it a bit short at that time and I, I do seem to be just about holding, but I think one of the differences as well, it's just giving Gary a bit of an edge in terms of holding the bottom. He's using a T900 rod, which has got a glass tip to it. So it's sitting around lovely in that tide, whereas mine's an all carbon tip and it is curved around a little bit but it's not it's nowhere near so it's just not it doesn't quite up it doesn't have the absorption that the uh, the t800 does so there's a lot more pressure on the line in the end gear rather than the tip just absorbing a lot of that strain which does mean I could be tempted to buy in a glass tip rod at some point well it's proven to be quite challenging now because just lost me gear, my leader, just through having a shed load of weed on. I did put it at range, but I've uh, switched reels to me faithful Fathom 212 mag version. Lovely little reel, great value. So what we're both both doing now. As a last ditch attempt to try and keep fishing into this tide, because the tides have. The tides are a bit bigger now from what they were over the weekend. We're just literally lobbing at 50, 60 yards just to try and get out of the main rip and uh, hopefully hold bottom and carry on fishing. So I'm just going to overhead this, see I've got seven ounces on, cast it up tide a little bit. no distance that would be lucky if that's 50 yards off this in front of this prom but the water's so coloured I would hope that um, if there are fish there that you'd still hit them anyway so I'm just going to let out a bit of a bar when the in the hope that it creates a bit of an uptide effect just helps that sink at a dig in but even even that close in <laughs> hell of a lot of pull isn't that still yeah, like Pretty incredible. I mean, I don't know what depth they're in there, but I'm, I'm guessing it's not a lot. It is just about holding there, thankfully. It seems to be, yeah, the further out you go, the tide just gets more and more. The tide pull, sorry, just gets stronger and stronger. I hit the range with braid on before, I put my rod in the rest. Going crazy, I thought it was a fish, and it's just me sink. I literally just getting whacked along the bottom all the way until it was at about 25 30 degrees from this prong. But it's all a learning curve, we've never fished here before. We've learned something already. It's quite a nice venue, to be fair. It's easy fishing in terms of from the platform that you're fishing. There's a sort of raised bit behind us here, so you can just jump up, cast. We've just got the bivy and the rods and stuff set up here, so it's it's perfectly pleasant. It's not the quietest of spots. You've got the M62 behind us there. You see the Humber Bridge, I don't know, what's that, a couple of miles away. It's um, quite an impressive thing to see, to be honest. Certainly more impressive than the Tyne Tunnel. Well, that's... The end of the first out into the Humber. Yep, challenging. Like the continued on from the last two days, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't know. It's we haven't had much luck here at all. Really, a couple of undersized fish. Tide pull is now pretty horrific to the point where you can only cast really maybe thirty yards if that. Otherwise, you just you're just parallel with where you're fishing from, really. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've never fished here before, so. We don't know what the, the crack is here, but we've enjoyed it. It's been a good Yeah, just nice by a bit crack enough. Yeah, it's been good. pleasant enough to sit here and fish. It is. It's a, it's a, it is yeah. a very easy venue to fish. Yeah. It's very uh, it's very comfortable. Um, I mean, we've just set up camp. We've had some pretty 
dreadful weather at times today and it's, yeah, it's come been through some savage squalls of rain have come through <laughs> yeah they certainly have but uh, that's another mark under our belt down this part of the world if sure the is. conditions are terrible on the coast we've got somewhere to come and at least we know we can fish so it's all just a learning curve it's enjoyable to fish somewhere new we've, we've managed to avoid the blank at least which is more than what we could say for the Euros comp so that's a bit of a result trying yeah. to take some positives from us <laughs> yeah just the long <laughs> drive home now isn't it exactly yeah. yeah but anyway hope you've enjoyed thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe share tight lines keep fishing we'll see you on the next one yeah.